Welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 28. I've been filming this blog for quite some time now, and every time I do it, there's a really annoying thing about my DV camcorder, which I'm using, that ticks me off every time I do it. So I thought I'd talk about bad product design. If you take a look at the screen here, it's got some really useful info on it. It's got a live sound level meter down here for my external microphone I'm using and it's got the setting, the um, input gain setting and it's also got the amount of uh, the time for the amount of footage I've shot as you'd expect. It's got the battery life remaining and various modes I've set and things like that and it's, it's really quite a valuable display but if I turn it around to face me and I turn the screen out which I use to view myself it, the image flips around okay but look there's nothing left on the display it turned off all the info and all that's left is, an, is a little uh, pause and um, stop icon on there and that's it and it's just really annoying it's, it's bad product design where is that info gone and why did they do it it's unbelievable being a product design engineer I, I notice annoying aspects in product design and product usability all the time every almost every product I see or touch I go oh, look what they've done here why have they done that it's crazy and I thought I'd just grab a few things around me and see what's wrong with them first example scientific calculator take a look at them right I actually prefer the Casio ones the uh, non VPAM crap anyway that's beside the point but Look at your standard pocket calculator. Most of the keys are fairly, fairly sensible, I think. Except there's one that's always bugged me. There's a couple that always bug me, but you know, you've got your trig ones. Sine, cos, and tan. Hype. Hyperbolic. Whoever uses hyperbolic trigonometry? It's, it's, it's crazy. Why would you dedicate, you know, it's only got a certain number of keys. Why would you dedicate a single key to hype and it doesn't have anything else on it either it doesn't even have a shift function it's crazy why do they do it and they do it on almost every calculator they've designed and the same thing the actual degree key as well it's crazy you know why wouldn't you put something basic on there like I don't know one on X perhaps go figure unbelievably nuts it drives me nuts take my favorite meter the fluke 87.5 or any fluke 70 or 80 series multimeter what's wrong with the product what's wrong with the user interface what's wrong with the product design here well it's fairly obvious they've used the main range switch for on and off that's that's crazy to switch the thing on that means every time you want to switch it off and on you've got to operate your range key and that just increases the wear and tear on this thing unbelievably nuts it's crazy they've got these soft buttons up here why not have one of them as the on off button unbelievable here's another one that ticks me off almost every day it's my watch it's a Timex I love my Timex watches they're great I've got a couple of them I think they're really terrific except for one aspect which I'll show you if you get it here and if you press the mode button to go into the stopwatch mode okay hit it and then there's a pause. There's a delay of about one and a half seconds there. All because it wants to display chrono. They want to put the you know chrono there. Why? I'm already in chrono. It stays there. You, you press the button and the chrono thing just pops up and then it stays there. You know you're in chrono mode. So why not just go straight into it? And it wasn't always like this. Um, their older models didn't have this issue. It's nuts. My computer bugged me when I first got it. I got it like a little cute, you know, these tiny little um, shuttle, uh, you know, boxes. They're, they're really quite nice. They're quite well designed. I think they're, you know, really excellent design overall. Except for one really annoying thing. You plug it in, you turn it on, and there's this huge blue LED in the front. That's, oh, it's just so bright. It's blinding. Why? Why not just have a nice subdued light on the front they put all this engineering into the internals of how the wiring goes and the heat sink in the quiet fans and all the rest yada 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 and they goofed it by putting this huge elite bright LED on the front and they market the product as being suitable for like um, you know for a home theater 
type um, setup. So imagine having that sitting in your home theatre rack under your TV with this blinding light coming out of it while you've got the lights turned off trying to watch Back to the Future. It's crazy. Let's try something else. The bike light, the, the rear bike flasher on my bike. This is a uh, Princeton Tech. So, you know, the really good design. Princeton Tech are really top quality uh, lights. They're, I love their gear. But look at this. You press it, it comes on. All right, no problem at all, but it's got all these modes. And if you leave it there, it's got a microcontroller in it, obviously, to actually control all this thing. But it, it comes on, and then if you choose that mode, when you want to switch it off, when you get off your bike, you've got to still cycle through the other modes to switch it off. Why can't you just it just know that you're in that mode and then switch it off? Crazy. I've got one of these PVRs, personal video recorder. They're a digital set-top box that actually records your programs, just like an old tape VCR. And this is the remote control for it. Now, being a PVR, you would think that it would have uh, stop, you know, play, record buttons on it, but no. Where are they? There aren't any. This is a DigiCrystal one, and it's, you know, it's crazy. There's some nice coloured buttons down there, and what you have to do is you have to press, it's got a button down here, and it's the PVR button. And you press that, and up on the screen pops a key overlay, a photo of this, basically, and it overlays the functions on the keys. Yeah, great, okay. Why can't they just print them on the damn buttons? Nuts! And that's just a couple of examples of things around me, but I see it every day. And if you're a designer like I am, you notice all these little things. You know, some are very subtle. And you notice them and you just figure, how could they have made the decision to do that? And, well, I kind of do understand because I... I've been working in the industry for you know, quite a long time. I've worked at a lot of, you know, quite a few different companies. And you can understand how these sort of things creep in. They, uh, management decisions, you may not actually, the actual product designer may not actually have any say in it. It might be designed by committee. It might be a, a pet uh, request of one of the managers or maybe even the CEO themselves or something. There's always something that prevents you from really refining the product that you really want, that you really think it should be. And that's one of the really annoying aspects of being a design engineer. You can't always have your way. You can't always argue with common sense because sometimes just the company or your system or the way your company designs things, they just don't let you design using common sense. And Really, it ends up with a half-assed product out the door. And, well, you know, so be it. But, yeah, keeps us employed. Speaking of product design, have you seen all these novelty gadgets these days? The market's flooded with them. You can't walk into an electronics store like J-Car without being flooded with these annoying novelty Toys, they're farting gadgets. You can get farting gnomes, you get choker chicken, choker boss, shocking games. You can get a spanko meter. Whoa, unbelievable. You know, you can get all sorts of things. You know, little talking toys, and you get toys that shock you and do all sorts of other stupid things. And it, it's crazy. And if you're anything like me, you wonder what it would be like to work in a company that actually designed these novelty gadgets in China or wherever they're designed. And you would think that it'd almost, you know, it'd be really fun. It'd almost be worth it for a little while just to see how much fun and effort they put into designing these novelty gadgets. And can you imagine the design review meetings coming up writing a functional performance specification for the Spanko meter? Whoa! Unbelievable! Now, I've, I've done my fair share of sort of weird stuff in the past. I've, I've measured the uh, shock and vibration response of women's feminine hygiene products. Go figure, but that's a story for another blog, I think. What? How cool would it be to work in a place that designed these products? I think it'd be great fun. So how about you leave a comment on some bad product design that you found? Let us know. Have a vent. It's on the comments there. Go for it.